but I'd love your calls on this. Should half of bosses be women? 0207 862 is the number. Tell us what you think. There are still not enough women in power at top companies, according to the former head of a government-backed group responsible for boosting the number of female bosses. Denise Wilson, who's held senior roles at the National Grid and British Gas, said 65% of the most important jobs in UK businesses still go to men. She said work to stop businesses being run by what she called a sea of white men, as it was at the start of her career, will never be fully done. And I've got some female businesses leaders here, actually, which just to show you the, who they are. Shrain Kurihak, who's CEO of the Cooperative Group. Roisin Curry, CEO of Greggs. So these are advances here. Lena Nair, CEO Chanel. Then we've got, there we go, uh, Hannah Gibson, CEO of Cardo. There's Hannah. Helen Connolly of New Look, CEO. And Lisa McGowan, who's CEO of Pets at Home. So those are the women who've made it. But Yasmin, too much still in the way of other women. Yes, and I think this is an important idea that if we actually had more than 50, because we're more than 50% of the population, I think, mm. women in this country. 51, 52. 51, 52, something like that. But it, the, the job doesn't end there. For my, the problem, I would completely go with this, and it's very good that she uh, you know, is pointing this out, that we think it's all over, the struggle for female equality. It's done. We've, you know, we've had all these women with power, blah, blah, and it's never done. It's not a job that's done. But then once you have the representation, I think we have to judge them in exactly the same way we judge men. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. That just having a woman there doesn't mean that, therefore, we can only support them because some of them are awful. Some of them are unfair to other women. Some of them are bad at their jobs. Someone who led the post office recently might exactly, come spring to mind. Exactly. Yeah. Well, or the woman who, who was started talking about Nigel Farage's bank account. Yeah, you know, head for, of NatWest, yeah. NatWest. So, you see, yeah, women and men both could do jobs badly. No, yeah. no one disagrees yeah. with that. But, Tim, maybe we do need to get, get a crack on here and, and actually... If essentially say it's got to be 50%. I, I really don't agree with that. I absolutely agree that if you are a political organisation, a business, whatever, if you're all of basically one kind of person, you are a very limited organisation. Um, you benefit from having the perspective of women, you have, of ethnic minorities, of working class people. You should aim for, to look as much as possible like the country or the people you seek to represent. But I think it gets sort of artificial when you start having targets like 50% because there'll be certain sectors, there'll be certain disciplines where women should dominate, not 50%, there'll be much more because that's what they're interested in. And there are other sectors which aren't to the case. So aim for diversity, but don't sort of have to hit particular numeric targets mm. because I think it, then it becomes formulaic rather than a pursuit of real, the best talented was, people. Th uh, this probably doesn't, isn't a very good comparison, but when I worked as a reporter in South Africa, they, they obviously had to undo apartheid and they had to be quite focused on changing the power structure in private business. It's not very easy. So they brought in a rule saying every company must have a black South African on its board. And the unintended consequence was that people began hiring themselves out with, with the guarantee they would, they would join the board. They would never vote on any decisions. They'd be effectively what were called ghost executives. Mm. And they would supply themselves to 20 or 30 companies for a fee, which is very, very entrepreneurial. But it's not what the law intended. No, but, but, but this is, I think, more about the world of business. And we have astonishing, successful uh, women running businesses, as you've just said. Well, seen. Denise Coates, oh, we haven't mentioned, who does Bet365. I'm glad you haven't mentioned her because it's it drives company. me oh, nuts. Oh, you don't like her either? No. Well, it's a horrible company. No. Is it? Well, I think yeah, absolutely. Bet well, well, I think it's a whole other discussion I, I, I betting. Don't, I don't bet, so I don't, that's no. why I've got but no moral judgment. There were, there, there's this woman who, I can't, I've forgotten her name. She has nine children and she's in the Lords, one of the most successful. Not Michelle Moan. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Where Mandy, is Michelle Moan? Mandy on Facebook says, we know a balanced board brings on empathy, better working conditions, better innovation and profits, and still we aren't changing. Why do you think women are turning their backs on corporate careers to create their own empire? Tracy on Facebook says, I'd want the best person. I would hate to feel I was only hired because I was a woman. Does it happen to men? No. Stop being so patronising and condescending. You said, I, I don't want to, I feel like we've, I haven't got Tracy on the line, so it's wrong to disagree, but 
we sort of know that things get entrenched, don't we? So, so when I joined the BBC in 1987, OK, there was a woman on the interviewing panel. There were five people, but there were four white men. And I, I kind of think now, looking back, they probably thought, oh, he's going to be like us. Well, he's no, another white she, man. Well, where she was wrong is to say nobody hires them because they're men. They do. Yeah, that's it. That's they it. They do. They do. It's, yeah, and there's, there's something but, about... It, it is. It. We were talking about Diana, Diana Abbott earlier. It is extraordinary now to look back at Parliament from the 80s Mm. And the sea of white men. Yes, I know. We've got a picture and, and, outside. Have you seen it? Extraordinarily. Yeah. And, I know. Yeah. And so, but what we should also recognise is we have made a lot of progress. Yeah. A yeah. massive progress. More to do. But we, sh we, we should be proud, actually. One of the things Britain has been very good at is making a lot of advances in this. We've when got, it comes we've had to a quick gender look at equality in the, House in of the Lords, international we charts, Go on. we're still doing much worse than surprising countries. I think South Africa is one of them. But we're near Rwanda, the top Rwanda, of the... Rwanda had the most extraordinary quality in, in their parliament. So we have a lot to learn yeah, from I, other yeah. countries. I, was I, I didn't think you were a big fan of Rwanda. Yeah, but, we, I, mean, we, yeah. No, I, I, don't, I don't think it's got the human rights it no, should have. Well, which not shows it's not enough to have the equality. Um, no. Somebody upstairs has, has looked for members of the House of Lords with nine children. They've come up with Helena Morrissey. Yes. That's it, yeah. Okay. Helena, Morrissey. Yes. Helena Morrissey is the person you, you, yes. you've done it all. Yes. Naomi, in London, you worked at the prison service. Um, yes, I did. Um, and I've worked with um, male governors and female governors. Um, and all through my career, when I've worked with female governors, um, it was a nightmare. Uh, uh, do you know, uh, I was wondering which way you were going to go, and I suddenly had an intimation you were going to say that. And so, so, why, so it might have been a nightmare by chance, or it might have been a nightmare because women don't run prisons very well. So you tell us what your view is. No, no, because it's not just in the prison service. It's, it's been in, I've worked in mental health and in hospitals, um, and I've found the same. When I've worked with females, that are in charge, they are quite aggressive um, and not approachable. Um, where the male, the male um, officers that I've worked with have been approachable and understanding. I, I, I kind of feel that when a woman gets in power, she feels that she has to prove something. Mm. Um, and I feel that she goes overboard a lot of the time. Yeah, I mean, um, I suppose the counter to that is they say if, if women had been running banks instead of men in the 2000s, we wouldn't have had this massive banking crash, which was just a form of willy-waving, wasn't it, Tim? It was. And I think there is an element in which I think if you are at the beginning of women entering certain sectors of society, you're entering a man's world and, in a way, you perhaps... Imitate yes. them and perhaps uh, over-imitate them. And your heroine them. Thatcher and might yeah, be an example. And that, exactly. She was tougher in a way than a lot of the men she worked with. But she was my, described as the only man in the... Yeah, <laughs> probably by herself. <laughs> um, but, of my, course... My experience, mistrust. though, is, yeah. is different. I, is I, I, we were just in the break, we are talking about some of the mental health difficulties I've experienced mm. recently. And the women managers, the women leaders that were in the organisations that I've been were definitely the most empathetic really? the most, and, and have helped me get back to where That's I am. That's so interesting, Tim. I, so I have a huge personal gratitude uh, for... We're not taking away from you, Naomi. No, I, and I think, I, it's interesting. I think yeah. she's, Naomi's raised a very important mm. point. Mm. Um, well, maybe prisons are very male. Not, no. The, the, in Mostly my industry, I have worked with male editors and female editors, and some female editors have been wonderful. but A lot of them have been really nasty. <laughs> so I didn't think you were going to say that. No, but who you was know, the nastiest is, one? This is what I mean. <laughs> Getting into a place is is fine. I would back that. But after that, we have to judge them on who they are and what they do. Okay, now exciting news. We've got another Yasmin on the line. Look at this, Yasmin in Manchester. So Yasmin, Yasmin. Hi. Yasmin, Yasmin. Meet each other. <laughs> what would you like to say, Yasmin? Hi, hi, Yasmin. Hi, Jeremy. Hey. I don't know the other gentleman. Tim, Tim. Name, but hi, uh. <laughs> <laughs> um. What I'd like to say is, um, with men and women bosses, it shouldn't matter what gender you are to get into um, a specific job. But what I found uh, in my career is that women are very vicious to other women. 
and I've seen it all the way through. And although I shouldn't say it like this, um, I'd rather work under a man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's a good note to end this part on. Thank you, Yasmin. <laughs> After the break, it's the papers and everything else, including good news for Angela Rayner and Labour as police wrap up their council house probe. See you shortly.